Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe UXB Plugins Quick Tip Tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you some various ways you can make sure you stay up to date with all of the new stuff that's constantly coming out for UXB plugins. Basically, with every new version at this point of Photoshop and soon to be InDesign and other applications, there are always new updates that you might want to know about uh, that make some backwards compatibility not possible, as well as some required things like in your manifest file that need to be updated, and some places as well we can get updates from the actual Adobe developers. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel, and down in the description you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, UXP plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And you can also join the channel as a member or supporter, uh, which helps support us financially as well as gives you cool perks like loyalty badges, emojis, membership status, and more. And also check out the links down below to see some stuff that I create on AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange. All right, so the first two places you should kind of frequent if you're really into becoming a UXP developer or you just want to stay up to date on some useful stuff and get answers to your questions, you'll want to be, of course, on the developer forums, and you'll also want to be able to reference the UXP API. These will both be linked in the description, but in the... So firstly, you have the creativeclouddeveloper.com forums, and here you can see the sections between Adobe XD, which does support UXP plugins, Photoshop, which currently does, as well as some other miscellaneous things like the plugin marketplace discussion, discussion on the UXP developer tool, and even forum feedback because everything here is sort of still pre-release and they're looking for feedback, not just with UXP, but uh, how they're developing it and the forums themselves. Anytime you see someone like Carry Shots or an Adobe mod, you're going to know that the information they're providing is going to be super useful and usually official as they have direct communication with the people developing UXP. And of course, you'll see some normal, really legendary people like Davida Baranka and other people developing and asking questions at high levels. So you can find, of course, just general questions here that people are asking similar to the Adobe forums. And you can also find high level questions and updates from the Adobe team themselves and experienced developers. And of course, the other huge thing you're going to want to get updates on all of the hottest fresh UXP information is the actual UXP reference. Um, of course, there is the UXP for Adobe Photoshop and the UXP API itself. So you have one specifically for an application and another specifically for UXP. You'll want to take a look at both of these because, of course, with every new version of an Adobe application, they're releasing increased amounts of scripting support as well as UXP support itself. And you'll also want to frequent the known issues section because it is quite extensive and well defined here. It will have a lot of informative stuff that if you find something really random or basic seems to be malfunctioning, perhaps you can just control F it in here and be able to find it. And of course, there is a, a UXP plugin section on my Discord server, not to have a shameless plug, but we do have some fair bit of discussion on here. A lot of it is, of course, similar to the Adobe forums themselves where, um, well, if the Adobe people aren't there to answer the question directly, a lot of us kind of have to guess or just do a bit, bit of experimentation or request that you go do a bit of experimentation as everything is still new and can take a bit of um, hacking or debugging to get around. But just to review, you'll want to make sure you check out the Creative Cloud Developer Forums quite often, check out posts from official Adobe people as well as experienced and new people. Um, you can also check out, of course, the UXP API, which is going to always constantly have updates for applications, UXP scripting support, as well as a list of all the actual UXP APIs that are built in, as well as known issues. I do have a few random other notes here that can be important, but this again is just stuff that I learned from going through the forums, as well as talking with other people and reading through the UXP guide. So one of the big things that I first noticed when Photoshop went from version 22 to 23 is that a lot of people's UXP plugins just stopped working. That's because between these two versions, not only was there a huge API change for Photoshop, where some of the old code wasn't even applicable anymore, you also needed to update things like your manifest file, which actually contains the minimum version of Photoshop, in this case required, to run UXP. And basically, if I were to set my UXP min version to 22, 
it's going to act like I'm using that older version of the API, some of which does not work for version 23. So in your manifest.json file, it is important to specify your minimum version to make sure that all of the stuff you're referencing, whether it's scripting or all of this reference here, matches the actual API that came out during that time. You can also make sure your manifest version is appropriate. This can change sometimes as well, but the main one is the, the host app version um, followed by the manifest version. And a specific example of this is that from version 22 to 23, if I'm correct, they basically added uh, almost a requirement to use this execute modal function or method, which lets you run a whole bunch of useful commands, but it also would break all of the earlier code, which you would then need to basically wrap within this specific function. And of course, the easiest way to find this out as a developer yourself is to add a ton of console logs or whatever debugging method you use to see how far your plugin gets and then identify that what well, execute modal seems to not be working or that seems to be where the issue is. So you can of course find these tips on the forums and things like that, but sometimes you also have to debug a bit yourself. But for the most part, new versions of the application API, as we get progressively more and more developed, uh, most of your existing code should work from one version to the next as it's more of an additive process. But this in particular case I wanted to raise because it is potential to happen sometimes is that sometimes things will be not be able to be retrograded to an older version. But if you guys enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates, as well as Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so in the description by becoming a member supporter. And this gives you cool perks as well as helps us out financially. And also check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to see some other cool stuff I make. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.